Hello. Welcome once again to Whispers in the Theater. I'm your host, the Whispering God in the Shoe, here to continue our exciting tale, The Other Side of Myth, Chapter 15, In Control. Puppet Carnival! Cammy called out before silence had the chance to settle. The words filled the air with magic, gathering so potently Kiara felt it against her skin. Six puppets rose from the ground, bodies ready for the trapeze. Threads of light tethered them to Cammy's fingers, and their charge started with a twitch. Diana shifted her stance in response, but Kiara didn't get the chance. A tutting sound drew her attention. Otis prepared an attack, too. Photochemistry! Beads of light twisted together as he raised his hands. Photorazor! They were long and sharp like their name implied, cutting toward the girl. Diana saved her with a push and put herself in danger. She blocked the first blow coming for her head, wincing as she felt the might. The second struck her side like a heavy stone, stilling her breath away. She gasped as a third came for her jaw. With gritted teeth, she bobbed. It whiffed. She returned the favor with a glowing punch. The puppet toppled back and another flipped over it. Its leg cut down and hers rose, flipping its momentum back. With practice ease, it bounced off its falling ally's chest. Diana followed it with her finger, taking sight of his chin. Strike her shot! The ball exploded forward. An uppercut missile. The puppet dropped, and two others came for a pincer attack. Diana bounced forward instead of meeting them, dodging the remaining two as well. With another glowing punch, she came for Cammy. A rift opened before her, a fist already flying from it. It buried itself into her core, stilling even her scream as it slammed her to the ground. Kiara screamed for her, but there was nothing she could do with a problem of her own. Diana's push had only delayed the pursuit. Before she even touched down, Otis came after her, beads of light falling to his hands. Photo saber! He slashed as one became a blade. Kiara tried to fly away, but he cut her takeoff short. The sword moved like a pin in his hand, weightlessly slashing for her life. She moved to blast him back, and beads struck the ground. Flashes bloomed out, making her shield her eyes. Meanwhile, Otis disappeared from the wind. Three rifts opened around her. In three different places, the air moved in. Photo volley! His voice came from the left. As she turned to it, the spell hit her back, searing it like a grill. She spun around, throwing fire. Otis chuckled from another place. Photo razor! Kiara dove. Still they ripped scars up her arm. Finally, she opened her eyes, searching for shadow through blurs of green. She found his emerging from behind a tree, his light ammo gone, but not for long. As her vision came back, she read his lips. Photochemistry for new ammo, photospear for the one that dropped to his hands. He smiled as he ran her down. Are you dazzled, gal? 
left blind by these flashes of brilliance. The thing was a feather light as he twirled and stabbed. It was solid, and she felt it in the breeze. Hurting all over couldn't stop her from dodging. Maybe not enough to avoid new scars, but enough not to get skewered. You're young, so let me give you a tip. He leveled the spear with her face. You should have turned over, Piala. Scarlet fire twisted forward before he could drive the point home. Otis fell through another rift and emerged a few feet away. Two puppets took position beside him. Behind him, Diana was back on her feet, but her plate was still full. I... Kiara saw Otis and Feline standing too proudly in front of her. He escaped unscathed. That made her swallow hard. Was she holding back again? Or was he far too quick? She could control her magic, right? She had to do better. The only point in seeing Feline was accepting this fight had to go the same way. I'm not running away anymore. I don't care how much things hurt. If she left Piala, what would be the point? Beyond matters of threads of fate, how could she live with herself afterwards? Otis sighed in deepest sorrow. What was it that boy said about serpent tongues? He looked to his puppet friends. Ah, yes. I don't think you'll be able to match yours. Beads splashed against them. Photographed. The light engulfed their bodies, turning them into reflections. As photochemistry came to their hands, Kiara's heart sunk. Puppets spun into their swings as they chased Diana down. Rosy skin turned purple, and blood poured into her eyes, but she stayed ahead on striking steps. A blow to her other side was not enough to stop her. It took her breath, but she blocked the next hit, throwing one of her own. As the puppet flipped over her target, she flipped back. The third slid in, tripping her up, and the fourth slammed her into a tree. Still, she would not say she was in dire straits. Even as his leg came up spitefully for her shoulder, she suffered the blow and carried on. She kicked the calf, kneed the face. It didn't break the dial but let her break free. No, she was not in a dire strait. Through the pain, she figured something out. She wasn't in a fight but a brawl. Fights were matches of skill where an opponent landed decisive blows. This was a brawl, and desperate at that, each telegraph punch trying to make her too tired to move. These puppets didn't have an ounce of technique, and their master didn't either. Strike her shot! She aimed past them at the face. Cammy's eyes had a moment to widen as the shot struck between them. Her head reeled back as puppets went limp. As her sight fell forward, she closed her eyes. Strike her crack! Diana shattered the bridge of her nose and pulled her in before she fell. Right hook, left hook, an uppercut to lift Cammy off her feet. Diana swayed, swinging her calf around. The puppeteer saw red before her face bounced on the ground. Cammy! Otis called. Diana pivoted to answer. He raised his hands with a change of heart. Photo volley! She offered a rebuttal with a glowing palm. Striker spray! The missiles collided, throwing each other astray, hitting the dirt, clouding the air. She exploded through it. Otis snatched the bead up. 
Photo chop! He brought the axe around. She ascended. Three leaps put her above him with a kick flashing down. Otis chose against meeting it, however, falling into a rift. He reappeared by Cammy's side. As Diana landed, they stared each other down. You're rather barbarous, aren't you? He laughed. She smirked. Just because I can't make fake weapons with my magic? Otis sneered and offered a hand to Cammy. Are you all right? He whispered, but not so low that he went unheard. I'm fine. Truth, despite the blood pouring down her face. She just caught me off guard. I never expected something like that. As Cammy took his hand, Otis pulled her close. Don't worry. I won't allow that to happen again. Diana crossed her arms. Being cute isn't going to make me hit softer. She called over and turned to Kiara before the chance was gone. The scarlet-eyed girl was scarred, but otherwise still on her feet. She was shocked, however, or maybe starstruck. Her eyes were wide her lips pursing in an expression that said she didn't know what to say. It was true. Kiara was speechless. Diana showed she could win this fight alone, and maybe would have if she had no one to protect. Something glowed under her shirt as two vials popped into her hands. She handed one to Kiara as she popped the stopper, downing the red liquid inside. Kiara couldn't help what flashed in her mind first. She saw a health potion in her hand, and what they did to Diana only proved it. The redhead's bruises faded away. Kiara downed the drink, too. It was bitter and thick, but her scars closed with a pinching pressure. If the taste hadn't twisted her face, that filling might have. Sorry about that. I haven't stocked up on sweetener so they taste terrible. Diana cupped one side of her mouth. Kiara just shook her head. We have this fight, though. I think they're trying to stall us out. Between us both, they had to sacrifice a lot of tricks. No illusions work, and the rifts are better used for defense than offense. To make matters worse for them... While I can't bust the puppets up, your fires take them out instantly. I'm pretty sure they work better as a team, but they're trying to keep our attention separate. Kiara wondered when she had the time to think of that. She looked over to the retrievers where Otis drew a potion from behind his back. It looked like Cammy got a sweeter version, while the bitter aftertaste haunted Kiara's mouth. What's the plan? It made talking bitter, too. Diana stroked her chin. Let's steal theirs, but switch things up. I'll keep Flashy busy, and you make sure a puppet girl can't do her thing. Kiara's hand ignited. Diana smiled. She faced the retrievers, pointing their way. I hope you had time to catch your breath. That's the last chance I'm giving you. Otis bowed shallowly. I appreciate the kindness. I hope you appreciate how I offered it back. It was invigorating. Diana put up her hands. Ah, but it appears we must have come to violence once again. I mean, you guys could run away. Give up on Piala, and we can go our separate ways. If you do it fast enough, you might be able to save your friends from mine. Cammy squirmed, and Otis put her arm around her. As she looked up, he smiled down, and a part of her visibly settled. I'm afraid I can't do that. Diana shrugged. Your funeral? On her percussive steps, she started the attack again. Otis took advantage of the space between them with a conductor's flourish of his hands. 
Photochemistry, he surrounded himself, snapping as they stopped in place. Photoshop, they morphed into weapons. He took hold of a saber and hand axe as Diana arrived. He met her with the saber biting for her eyes. She skidded to a stop and ducked low, dodging the axe that came for her neck. The low dive turned into a sweeping kick. Otis flipped back, bows at his shoulders aiming down. As she rose to pursue, Diana took a shot through the thigh. That didn't stop her from raising her hand, but shadows behind her did. Two puppets suddenly leaped out of a rift. Just as fast, fire swallowed them, letting Diana revel in Otis's frown. Strike a stream! Like spray but narrow, it flew from her palm, battering the man with a rush of blows. It sent him careening deeper into the brush. As Diana chased, her gaze slid to Kiara. From green eyes to scarlet, the intention was clear. She'd keep Otis busy. Kiara just had to finish Cammy off. Don't hesitate. You have control. Kiara launched a torrent at the puppeteer. While she was ready, Cammy was not, only saving herself through sudden sacrifice. A puppet threw her into a rift, going up in flames as the fire hit. Cammy tumbled out a moment later, red hands saying she hadn't dodged fast enough. That didn't stop Kiara from attacking again. Puppies jumped in front of their master, letting her rift away. Still, she didn't get far. The burn seemed to be holding her back, and Kiara wished she could demand a surrender. Puppet carnival! But Cammy would refuse, casting this spell either way. As the puppets rose, the fire fed. The woman didn't look surprised, but Kiara could see defeat. Or maybe it was a shift of her plan. Cammy didn't seem ready to back down, but how could she ever win? Biting down, the woman dashed forward, daring the flame to meet her charge. Kiara obliged and the rift opened on the ground, a pitfall saving her life. As another opened behind the girl, Cammy emerged with words on her lips. Puppet performers, she yelled, falling back in as Kiara turned. Two dolls formed as she popped out to the side, strings wrapping around their heads. Go help Otis, she coughed the command. The puppets turned, leading scarlet eyes away. A flame pursued and was swallowed by a rift. Kiara took flight to blast him from above, catching Cammy's smile before she was even in the air. Puppet Paragon! A colossal doll rose from the ground, putting the woman in his chest. It stood as big as a tree, with limbs just as thick. Dropping into a stance familiar to Kiara's eyes, it thundered toward her with hearty force. She met it with a roar of fire, but it dashed through, sundering the ground with a fist. Kiara escaped flying higher, but not fast enough as a hand came up. She screamed as it caught her in a tight grip. Horror dawned as it swung down, bringing her back to the ground. A fire burned through the joints just enough for her to get free. She sent it down the hand, through the arm, and the other one knocked her down like a fly. It was only by the wind's protection that she stood after smashing through branch after branch. Every part of her protested, demanding she stay on the ground. She could feel the warning she got about the gems. How has she become a girl who was fighting for her life? 
It hadn't even been a week since she was in Blythe's office, and yet that felt like a lifetime ago. The puppet's arm healed. Kiara's jaw tightened. Could Diana even take this thing down? She shook her head. This fight was for her. While Diana fought somewhere further out, stopping Cammy was what Kiara had to do. Don't hesitate. You have control. She took off and felt the weight of a tree crashing into the ground. The puppet tore another free, and she pushed a flame through his knee. As it buckled and dropped, she stopped herself from throwing fire again. A thought suddenly came to mind. Why didn't Cammy use this spell sooner? Years of gaming told her casting spells cost the price, and as the puppet's knee healed, Kiara could see the limits. This was not a spell that would be cast again. If she burned off pieces, it'd keep coming. But what if she burned the body as a whole? What could the woman do after that? There was Kiara's chance to win. The tree flew like a spear, and the girl shot away. As the breeze struck, knocking her from the air, the puppet dashed in. She wiped the blood from her eye as she burned through his ankle. The healing started again, and the girl took her chance. The fire had to be bigger. It needed to burn hotter than it did before and hit the puppet with far more force. Taking inspiration from Mordenar, her ignited hand crackled and brewed like a storm as she twisted the blades into a ball. The puppet rose. Cammy charged. Kiara let it free, unleashing an inferno alive with animal savagery. She blacked out when the last ember left her coming to with Piala and Diana leaning over her. Diana sighed with relief. All right, just a little magic fatigue. I thought we lost you there for a moment. She was all patched up, healed in one part by her potions and another by their charge. Kiara sat up as Piala fed her new life, heart going into a free fall as she saw the havoc she wreaked. That stretch of the forest was not ablaze, only because simmering ash remained. It was blackened and charged, every inch making her heart drop further. The absolute abyss was in the mound in a spot of its own. Her mind tried to convince her it could be something else. Still, the imagery was honest. A husk lay on his back. Scorched eyes turned to the sky. Kiara swallowed hard and looked away. Diana blocked the sight. It was instant. She gave the only consolation she had. The truth of it didn't matter. Kiara didn't need to know. She didn't need to live with the explosion of the puppet and Cammy's agonized scream. It was enough that she ended the battle. There was nothing else to say. While deep in her fight with Otis, Diana saw the eruption light up the sky. She felt the heat from where she stood and forgot her opponent as she turned to the force. The smell of burnt wood clung to the air, and Otis disappeared into his rift as he came to understand. Diana followed fast. Desperate to guard Kiara against revenge. The man went to his ally, however, ignoring steel hot cinders as he dropped to his knees. Cammy, it's going to be okay. There's amazing magic out there. We'll get you to Vanessa and we'll get you to a surreal or goblin. You'll be as good as new. Just hang on. He spoke in rapid fire as if stopping to breathe would steal her last breath. Could she hear? Could she see? Otis tried to lift her 
and the honesty of their bond was laid bare. Cammy knew he was there. Only he would do that. Her hand went to her throat as if to hold it together. Several hard breath poured in through the sliver of her mouth. Diana watched for both of their sake. Live. All the air in the rest of Cammy's life went to that. Her body went still, and Otis looked at Diana and then Kiara. She expected revenge, but there was understanding. It was the realization of a child or an animal when they made an irreversible mistake. If not for Cammy, he might have broken down right there. A rift opened instead, and he fell through it. Diana sighed and looked at Kiara. That wasn't a memory she needed. Cammy's body was already too much. She helped her up and looked through the trees, hoping the boys had an easier time. Chapter 15 Ends And so too ends another episode of Whispers in the Theater. I would be delighted if you were to join me once again. Thank <laughs> you.